Hey everyone, I am joined today by James Muscar and we're going to have a nice little chat about how High Rocks could potentially be improved. So James is an experienced pro athlete, a triathlete, uh, a coach. He's got his own YouTube channel over at JFit. Uh, and just for context for this discussion, I put out on our Instagram stories a little while back asking for uh, people's feedback on what they would do to help improve High Rocks. And I've got a ton of feedback and I thought I'd get James on to uh, to have a chat about, you know, some of what we think has the most validity to it. So, James, thanks for joining us. No worries. Great to be here. It's always nice to sit down and um, talk, talk high rocks. It's exciting than anything. So let's go. Exactly, yeah. So what, so what I, just, uh, just for some context with this uh, conversation, it, I want it to be about things that I think uh, are valid and realistic. So some people came back and, you know, were like, I would, take out the sleds and i'm just like eh, that's not gonna happen or you know change the farmers yeah. yeah yeah change the farmers carry some deadlifts things like that things i don't think are gonna happen you know maybe maybe they will but i think it's more about uh, steering conversation around things that potentially could be changed and as an example like in the past uh, a lot of people like uh, have talked about how the the sleds were different in america and europe and that was causing some controversy and by the sounds of it, that, that sounds like it's been uh, changed for this upcoming season, yeah, which is good. Um, so uh, the purpose of this conversation is to talk about things like, you know, other things that maybe could be improved and changed. Um, so uh, let's get into it. So the first one, the first one by far, uh, like the, the overwhelming feedback was the judging standards. The, the, the oh, <laughs> Controversial right off the bat, right? That is a... Yeah. That is a big one. And yeah, there's definitely room for improvement there, I suppose. I think I think one of the things that is a big topic for that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're all volunteers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's where you get it. I mean, the, the the majority of them, I'm sure like there's a couple of head coaches and like high rock yeah. staff that are like on, on, on duty, but the majority of the people, while let's take one of the biggest ones, the baby broad jumps that are dotted around that station are, are kind people that have decided to give their time up to come and judge me jumping around a course it's quite hard to be super strict on when someone is there giving their time I, I i i find that quite difficult to see how they will improve that um without paying people but i don't know do you need to be paid to tell people what's right well, no, no, I mean, it's, it, it is a tough one and they're volunteers. And, and to be fair, I, I can't say that I've noticed a huge issue personally with, with the standard of judging. But I know, you know, the, the feedback that I got when I asked the question, like there, there were certainly some people that have like some real issues with it. Oh, I've um, seen, I have seen some dodgy. And no, no, it's not even necessarily the judges. It's, it's, like, it's the athletes. I think we're all responsible ourselves. Like mm -hmm. you should know your own standards. Like yeah. So I, I, why we're blaming the judges when they're there to just make sure it goes smoothly is, is, is you know we need to take some responsibility and know where what we are meant to be hitting off of a standard perspective. So, I but I you know the judges do need to call it when you get you get tired on wall balls and you're not quite hitting depth. I I've seen I've seen people not even not even hitting parallel. You meant to break parallel. Never mind. I've seen people like you know a good few inches above parallel and getting away with it, and it's it's not fair. It doesn't make a fair race. Now, I understand that you're not trying to qualify, or you're just trying to do the time, and you know you're not in the race race. You're trying, but it doesn't matter. Like you want, we want it. That's the, the beauty of high rocks. You can be trying to beat your own personal two hour time, and you still want to be making sure that you do it the same every time. So the standard yeah. should still be there, and I think. You've got to make sure the judges have the confidence to call that out and, and no reps on Like it's, it's because uh, especially at the front of the race, if you are there, you are, you're trying to, you know, get a spot for your world, you're trying to win your age group or whatever it may be. If, if your person next to you is going three inches less than you for a hundred reps, or maybe they've been taking an extra half a step on the lunges in between, you know, all the way around, it does add up and it does add up to fatigue as well. Yeah. Yeah. It adds up and, and it, 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 it it spirals as well. So you're talking about the person that's taking over two hours, for example. And I must admit, I used to think I'll just, you know, like they, they're not they're not competing for podiums. You know, it's it's not the end of the world. But it's it spirals. So then, you know, 
are you letting the if you let the two hour person get away with it, then you know the hour and a half person then tries, and then the hour and a quarter person then tries to get away with it. Yeah. It spirals until it's like a of problem. Of course, it does. And I, I, I think everyone's. I don't, think, I don't think anyone turns up with the expectation or the potential to want to cheat at these yeah. kind of events. I think it's a mistake, and I think I haven't been. I've been warned once for a, a baby. Um, I'd be like, just just watch your hands of it, kind of idea. And it's like, oh. I'm tired. I've, I've lost my, you know, I've lost my focus for half a second and whatever it may be. And it's like, okay, fine. I'm glad you told me. Like, keep me honest. This is a, yeah. this is a hard station. It's a hard workout. Like, I've never had a no record on a war ball. It's all that kind of stuff. And you're like, I, I want to be right. I want to make sure my own personal thing is, is, is being right. So when I do it next time, I can beat my own time. And like, I think there's a, there's just an element of the, we, we need to make sure the judges are, feel empowered enough from High Rocks, that they've given them enough information, enough, there's no um, grey area, and enough, like, you know, confidence to be able to go, you need to do this. This is why you're here. You need to turn around and say, you're, you're an inch short. What, even if it's a warning for the first one, you know, even if it's a, I'd take that, you know, you know you're, you're an inch too short. Next rep, if you do it again, you get, you're get doing that rep again. Like, yeah. Yeah. however you want to play it. But, yeah. And you, going back to what you said about, um, it's it, 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 it's it's on the athlete as well, uh, other than the judges. And I do think, like, if we're talking about improvements, I do think Hyrox could do a better job of of like really ramming the standards down your throat before the event. If you, I, I've been watching, I watched like one of the technical briefing videos, like before this, and it it, it does talk about you know you've got to go below parallel for for your wall ball, and but but really it's like it's like a ten second video on how to do the wall balls. And I, and I think there could be like real examples of like what's not allowed, what is allowed, what's a good one, what's a bad one. And, and, and on the burpee broad jumps as well, you know, it, it is easy to, to cheat in a way. Like th this one wouldn't be allowed, this one would be allowed. So it's very it's, clear in people's minds. For a judge, it's quite hard to when it's the, the rule is something as vague as, um, what is it, a forearm away from your foot landing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are, is it? Is it your judge's forearm? <laughs> is it my <laughs> forearm? Is it like yeah. I, don't, I don't know? Like, like, and also, like, that, that's very, it's not very specific, is it? Like, it's not like, um, I, I don't know what you would make it. I'm not making the rules, sure. I'm not going to guess, but you could have a, a, a bit more of a standard on that. And even you say, even if you ram it down as an example, like, basically, what they're trying to say is you can't superman. Like, that's not going to be the rule. You can't put that. But you can't land with your arms further than your head and yeah. like and be like, right, that's it. I'm an extra. Whoop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's one yeah. baby less to do. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. there's got to be a, you know, you can't put your foot past your hand, like on, on a step up. You can't jump past that pit. Like, you can't stand up and take half a step, which I've seen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I yeah. jump. Like uh, you, it's all these extra little tiny bits. But yeah. you know what? If you're doing that the whole way around, like I said, I don't think anyone's doing it to gain that time. I think they're doing it because they're stood up they're, and they're just kind of like they're just exhausted and they've made a yeah. mistake. But and, there, and there's a lot of newcomers coming in as well that haven't but, even done anything like this before. They don't even really know that like it is an issue or anything like that. There's, there was a girl down my gym who's doing um, London in 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 November. And she was doing like these lunges the other day and like her knee weren't even getting close to the ground or anything like that. And I said to her, like, you know, that's not allowed, right? And like, she had no idea. Um, and and it's because really, like, it's not been rammed down her throat enough already yeah. that, that, that what is allowed and what isn't allowed. So I think there's a, I think there's a, there's a big thing there where um, you, people are great, including myself, I'll hold my hands up at reading, like, specifications of like technical documents that say this is what you can and can't do a, a quick video um where is, is is kind of like the easiest way to get people to, to get excited about something and um i do just think that so many people sign up for something because it looks fun they've seen the the hype videos which are awesome from like high rocks and they've gone me and my friends are doing it like let's all let's all do it you know like my friends going, I'm going to go with them. It's going to be fun. They sign up on a whim kind of idea, which is awesome. Come and get involved. Everyone can do this sport. That's the point of it. But it's like, they just turn up on the day and have a go. And that's, I think that's boss. It's awesome. It's an awesome way of doing it. But there are standards. There are rules. And it's yeah. like, if you sign up, I, I do know people who have signed up, like, and just 
not really knowing anything about it. Like I know one guy, we actually interviewed him on a podcast and that turned up his mate signed up for doubles. One of them kind of knew what it was and the other one was just like, uh, he asked me to do it, so I'd just jump in. Like, I'd, he was driving down, he turned up in one, turned up in Mekons, uh, so you know he didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turned, turned, so I'll go back into the shoot conversation, but uh, I was like, just turned on, on the way down, I was like, what are we doing in the car? This is what he was saying on the party. He's like, what are we doing? So I've got to run 8K. And he thought, like, he just nearly didn't have a clue. Don't get me wrong. Absolute animals. He smashed it. But that's the that's to some extent an issue. Like if you're like, less of an experienced athlete of these two, you they kind of know their CrossFit standards very well. Their knee needs to touch the floor. They know how to do a wall ball. They've got experience and got away with it. Um, whereas some people who are just like, I could give that a go with my friends. They need yeah. to know. Like it, it just makes it a makes it a fair race. Yeah, yeah. And for the for the um like the future of Hyrox, if Hyrox wants continues to grow, like a lot of the feedback on this was like this is this is one argument that CrossFitters have that Hyrox is like a bit of a, a noddy sport at the moment. Because like a lot of CrossFitters are looking at videos, looking at some of the social media videos and saying like oh, the standards are shit, you know, uh it's it's a joke at the moment. And I think if they want CrossFitters to come into the sport and take it a bit more seriously, then the standards have to improve because CrossFit is... Oh, man, I, I, I mean, I think CrossFit's amazing. And I love, uh, I love some of the data you've pulled off from like the recent uh, High Rocks, sorry, the CrossFit Games and things like that. Some of the information that's been circulating around that. And do you think we've hit these numbers for views and things like that? I think it's really interesting stuff. And I'm like, I'd love to get to that point. But CrossFit is talking about standards. Don't turn up to High Rocks and talk about standards. I've been to your boxes, CrossFitters. <laughs> don't think I don't know what you think your standards are, too. Like, um, we're not talking about Matt Fraser's and Hunter McIntyre's here. We're talking about, you know, the top of the elite of the elite. We're talking about the everyday people who go to the go to a box or go to a high rocks class. And like, yeah, there's some discrepancies in the in the in the standards there that need to be improved. But that's on both sides of this tail. So let's not right, let's not let's right. not pretend it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just just before we move off of this this topic, and we won't stay on it for too long, but a couple of other su- sort of suggestions that came up were um, making sure that they've got the most experienced judges on the wall balls and the burpees. Like it, yeah. it doesn't need hundreds and hundreds of judges. Um, you know, the less experienced ones stick them on the rower and the skier where there's, there's not, you know, too much controversy. It's, got, it's a thousand. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which, which seems fair enough. Um, and then uh, what else was suggested? A- having like a judging certification, especially for the world championships. Agreed. Um, uh, maybe a judge per lane, but that's potentially unrealistic, I, I, I suspect. Um and the other thing that I've heard a few times is is about improving the con- um, I, guess, I guess consistency, but it's that, it's not just the, the the wall balls and the burpees. But I'm just hearing like random rules that some judges have told some athletes. Like there was a guy the other day in the doubles on the sled push, and they were told that they weren't allowed to change over until they were at the end of the lane, and then. Uh, another judge had told someone that they had to do 50 wall balls each, like in the doubles. And it sounds like sometimes these, these, these rules are just made up. Right. And it, it, it's just affecting, uh, affecting some athletes. So make, I mean, it's easier said than done getting rid of that. Cause if these people are just making up rules, but um, just, just, <laughs> just making sure that the judges are clear. That. That, is, that reminds me of that, but you can see it happening, can't you? People do, they get, they get an idea in their head where it's like, oh, it's 50 50. Like, yeah. so and it's just, they haven't read it anywhere. They've just, that in their head, the, the, the thought that was a good idea at some point, and it's it's percolated, it's continued to grow in their mind. And now it's it's an official rule. Uh, yeah. Like, you've got to do 50, and I've got to do 50, <laughs> and you've got to do it straight. You know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Break, broke. You, have, you have to start again. Like it's just like, it's like things like grow and grow arms and legs, and it becomes something completely different. But I completely agree. I think your know, judging certification would be would be fantastic. And do they have that in CrossFit. I think that is a thing. Uh, it may not be, so don't, don't quote me on that. But I think there is some some form of certification for judging in CrossFit. And uh, and I think what you've got to bear in mind is this kind of stuff. I, I, we're on the comparing to CrossFit conversation, but it's not it's not about that. But any new sport is going to have these teething issues. Like it's been in the UK for a year. 
Um, it's been around for like four years, but I mean, it hasn't blown up. Like it hasn't, like it's done okay in America. It's okay in Germany. Like it's doing fantastic. It's, I mean, it's also started in the middle of a pandemic. Like it hasn't like, it hasn't really had the opportunity to grow arms and legs and become this whole new thing, which it is doing now. It is starting to get that momentum. And there was no way that all these finer details of judging standards, having at most experience, how can you have most experienced coaches when you've only had one season? Like, like that doesn't make any sense. Like, it's a great idea, but we will see more of that as we progress as a sport. As a sport. And yes, let's get the most experienced people and all that, you know, the coaching certifications and the judging certifications in place for the world. Let's make sure that happens. Like, make sure that's right. Um, but I just think that's a tough I think we're going through a phase right now where like we're trying to get used to it. We're trying to get people on it. And as the, as we progress as a sport, we will see, you know, someone who's done three judging, they've judged at all three events last year. Now they're like, they're just a pro. They've teamed to all the technicals. We've got them on the wall balls and you're an inch of depth. And you're like, get out of it. Start again. But we'll see it. We'll see people become more confident and, and grow in, in this world. I think that's just a little, it's, it's, it's part of every new sport, right? It's the part yeah. of every new sport. We're, we're, yeah. we're growing with the sport and it's growing quickly. So I think give us a bit of time and we'll get there. Yeah. And I did see they were, I think it was in New York, they were advertising for a paid head judge position for, for New York, the New York race. So it's it's, it's just a start, right? It's just it, it, things like that coming in and it, it's going to improve over time. Paid head judge, please. I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Right. I reckon I'm a pretty good judge. Hi, Rox, hit me up. <laughs> right a standards done let's move on uh next up event timing so oh, there's, 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 yeah. there's probably two issues in this one is um you'll probably talk about but the the, the timing of the men's pro race uh being so late and then and then the other one uh is only finding out your starting time a couple of days before the race, which, um, I mean, I don't know what one you want to tackle first, but, uh, well, let's get into the pro men's pro timings first. I don't like either of them. It's the other sounds great. Like both, both, <laughs> both, both of them are things that I have been vocal on in the past, not just on my own platforms, but to high rocks UK themselves. And I've tried to take some of the best practices from triathlon. And be like, you sign up to a certain wave, a certain time, you're told on what it will be before you pay your money. And I know people who have not turned up to events, having paid for events, due to them finding out a week before that it was at eight o'clock at night. And I'm like, that's not fair. That's not how you grow a sport. Um, I understand there's significant logistic issues, and I can't answer that. That is, it's not my job. Um, but there are suggestions around that. And I think if you've got a, I believe there's roughly a 700 people waiting list, 700 person waiting list for um, High Rocks of London. So that's how many people are currently waiting to get on the, to, to, to race. If you've got that many people waiting and you've stopped advertising and you, and that was a couple of, that might have even been a month ago I got that figure. If you continue to advertise, and push and try and try for more. Why not do two days? Mm. Why not? Why not do Saturday and Sunday and have men's open? I understand the logistics of having um, men's pro in between or women's pro in between. The weights have to swap and you have to have people to swap them over. But if you had pro on Sunday, open on Saturday, all day, like if you can get the numbers to which it sounds like you can because you've got seven hundred waiting to race without even continuing to advertise like London is miles away still like London is like a whole like basically next season it's so far away we've already sold out like I'm not worried about London like if you've got that kind of interest there must be revenue in it and a business case to go do it over two days sell more tickets put them on two separate days and then all day as in nine to four or whatever it is you have a time slot of you're going to be in one of these waves like in, in that time, even if they have to be a bit quieter about which wave, but you're going to be on Sunday between nine and four. Like at least you've got an indication. You're not going to be at eight o'clock at night. And you can get smarter with that. There's so much more you could probably do with that. But like 
top of my head thinking kind of idea. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that actually, um, uh, someone else said about uh, having the World Championships over, over two days because then that would allow someone potentially to do like the doubles one day and then an individual another day. And if you did that, uh, that hasn't got to be confined to the World Championships, right? You you, you do it on, on on a normal event. Exactly, yeah. I've been asked a few times, would you do doubles? Would you come and would you join us for the mixed relay? I'm like, guys, I'd love to, but I'm racing. Like I, I trained all off season and all last year for this opportunity to race. I put a lot of time and effort in, as does everyone. And there's only well, there's like four. You know, there's only a couple of handful of races I can do in the UK. I'm not going to lose an event and an opportunity potentially to qualify for the world by having fun and just jumping into a mixed relay. Because I, I can't justify it. Like in that sense, it's like I I train for this. So it'd be nice if they were on separate days. Do both. I'd love to do both. I mean, I'd be, how much fun would it be to to do a mixed relay as well as your, your own race? Um, it, it would it would create more opportunity for people and to be able to help more people to get involved. Uh, I don't know about the worlds. I, I'm sure that the worlds was a beautiful event. And it was so well contained and looked after and done. It was done so well, but I think it was partially because it was capped. And it was like, this is how many people have qualified. I think if you put it over two days, they didn't have the numbers for that. And they didn't have the numbers because they weren't giving out world's spots to just anyone. It was like, you got a world spot if you were like, you know, top two on the podium. I think even in like my age category, because it's one of the, bigger number age categories, it was only top two. It wasn't top three or whatever it was, or maybe it was top three, but the one below was only two. It wasn't anyone on the podium got a spot. It was like they're keeping the numbers to 1,500 people. They could have sold 4,000, but it would have been, you know, another 2,000, 2,500 people of who were like fourth, fifth. And like they've done fantastic to become fourth or fifth in their age group. But it's the world champs. Do we want fourth and fifth or do we want one and two? Oh, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like we, we could roll them down and get more people there, but I think that takes it away a little bit from the the purpose of it being a world champs. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, my yeah, opinion. Yeah. I mean, I assume my works have a similar opinion on the basis that that's how it was conducted. But you could do it for races. You could do it for normal races and just have if you've got the interest, do it over two. Yeah. Give people yeah. an idea at the time beforehand. Do you know what I mean? When you sign up, sign up for you know. Men's pro, men's pro takes place generally between six and nine o'clock at night. And you can go, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll do men's open instead. Yeah. Like you give, give people the opportunity, at least the information. Yeah. And if, um, I mean, maybe higher ups watching this and say, like, it's still not financially viable. I, I guess you could mix it up, right? And at, at the moment, it seems like the men's pro is, is always last and it's getting late, you know. But maybe it's last in Birmingham, maybe it's first in London, like a month later, for example, to, so that people that don't want to compete at eight o'clock at night, maybe will compete at nine in the morning. And then like, you get them done, you get the weights changed over. Um, like, I, I think mixing it up is probably fair for, for the, for the men's pro. Yeah. I think the, the High Rocks UK perspective on that would be um, spectator tickets. That's a revenue stream on its own. People will stay and buy spectator tickets to watch the pros. So they mm. will hang around for the pros if they've got a ticket. Kind of idea, uh, because that's where you know you get like your, your Hunter McIntyre's and your Tom Hogan's and your people who are like, I've seen them, I've seen them on YouTube, kind of thing. Like, I they're like they're pretty big deals. Should we hang around for an hour and watch them go? Uh, I don't know. I think that's what they will, would say. Um, I can't see that being overly massive generating of revenue because from experience it's generally quite generally quite quiet while I'm running around at eight o'clock at night most people have gone home maybe it's because they're, they're not bothered about watching me but uh, <laughs> it's, it's that thing is it like I think that would be the argument there um, I think I would like to see the data on that <laughs> to, to evidence it but that's a, it's a internal I, 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 I would imagine that's a drop in the ocean for, for them like the, the I spectators. would too but uh, that's yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? Who knows? But I, I would, I, I like your idea of mixing it up a bit and at least giving us the opportunity to be like, let's see the females compete at nine o'clock in the morning and see them go. Like, so I can watch, you know, Dina and all these other phenomenal athletes 
go before I go. Like, I'd love to be able to watch that and not be like, oh, well, actually, if you're just before me at, you know, eight o'clock at night, I'm, I'm exhausted or, you know, whatever it is. Just if you, if you have that bit of rotation, it might give us a, um, might just make it a bit more interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. And away from the men's pros, like going back to like, being notified of your start time further in advance in, in a couple of days, uh, I certainly think is worthwhile. Not not only for for like events where you're more local, but when you've got to travel, you need to know whether you're going to stay overnight the night before or the night after, things like that. It's, I think it's important to know, especially, I mean, especially if you're considering going abroad. I was like half thinking of going to Basel and I was like, for a while, I mean, I, I, I contacted them in the end, but I was like, well, I have no idea whether I'm going to need to fly out the night before, fly out the, the uh, fly home the day after when I need a hotel for or anything like that. Yeah. Um, because I wouldn't find out till a couple of days before. So I think that's probably a, a relatively easy thing to fix for I, them. It seems so easy. You can't believe you haven't done it, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. it seems so. I, like I say, I'm not asking it would be great for a start time to be like, you know, but why not give you a, a category start time? Say men's open is 10 till 2. You could get any wave, any wave 15 minutes apart in, in that time zone. But it's 10 till 2. Like at least you go, hmm, right? I need to be off. I need to be, I can get a flight at 7 o'clock at night. Now that gives me enough time to get from there to the airport and get through. Like, but if you've got your start time and you booked at 7 o'clock at night and your start time's at 4 o'clock, you got a real problem. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, you know what I mean? All right. All right, well, let's, let's, let's timing's done. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one is mixed doubles. And um, really like the, the controversy here is, if you like, is in the mixed doubles, it's feasible for, for the, the, the workload to not evenly be split on the, on the, on, on the functional stations. Uh, and it, how the world record is broke. Exactly, yeah. So there's cases where essentially the guy is, is doing all of the work and, and, and the female is there primarily for the running. And I think there's always been some splitting of the workload, but it seems like it's getting a bit of a controversial subject. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Mm. It's tactics, right? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know how much you could enforce that. And then once again, it comes back to a judging issue. Like, you got to name your judges and be like, by the way, you know, you, you've got to make sure that uh, Greg is only maximum allowed to do 60% of the work and his female partner has to at least 40% of it if we're going to start putting rules on it. And then say you do, you know, 150 metres and your partner jumps on and does, you know, 50, 60, 70 metres. Who's, who's making this calculation on the skier to, to go, was that... 60% or did Greg actually do 65 and we all got a bit confused because they were swapping and changing. Like, you can't make someone do 600 metres and a 400 metres. That's, like, ridiculous. Like, I wouldn't do that as a as a doubles, never mind mixed doubles. Like, I'd be like, I'll do 30 seconds, you do 30. Who work, like, you don't know what people are working off. So, I think that'd be very, very hard to implement as a, as a percentage. It would be nice to be able to go, right, okay, a female should do at least forty percent of the work on the eggs or on the you know the station functional movements. I don't think you're going to be able to implement that. No, I, I think no. it's the it's a it's a non-starter, and I think it's tactics. Like let's give let's give the women the credit where the credit is due. Like I know plenty of women that can like out, out working on those functional movements. Like it depends on your partner. Like. Yeah, like, I'm going to be honest. If we if I get somehow get signed up with Tia Claire to me, I'm going to step back and go. All you, all you, Tia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the only way that I can see it, um, sort of getting getting resolved to a certain extent is if if they changed it where you've got to do four legs each. So they've done it a little bit more like the relay. So one person has to, you know, you you pick the four exercises you're going to do and you do four runs, and then and then the other person does four and four. Um, ah, okay. So you do four exercises each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, logistically, that's, that's probably a bit of a headache for, for Hirox to do, but they do it to a certain extent for the relay, and um, and I guess if they cared that much, they could do it for the for the mixed doubles. Yeah. Um, one one benefit of this would be that that then splits it up. Like someone is then doing four car running and four exercises. I think that would be a very good introduction to the sport for for a lot of CrossFitters and other people who are put off by the eight car running. 
to to say it. No, oh, but ev- this- everything. Oh, not to make sure that it doesn't does it. I was gonna say it doesn't everything really make you do. I do like the idea that you have to do the eight K one though. Like it, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me or like it, I don't think it would be a bad idea to actually do it as as you're saying for each, but you you can't like, you tag in for the run as saying, but like you both have to do the run. But like, so both do eight k runs, but you've got to do four, four exercises four, four. each. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a really yeah. cool way of doing it. Like, because I, I think the eight k is kind of. I mean, mixed relay is different. It's a whole different animal, isn't it? As it's just relay. Sorry, not mixed, but relay is different altogether. But if, um, it's still high rocks. It's still very much high rocks if you're doing the eight k running. Like, so if you put that in there and you you, go, you want to split them half and half, like, well, you have to. Like, you have to do for each. I mean, that'd be really interesting, actually. Like. Uh, but it's that that AK is kind of what separates people. Like it's yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. It's it's a big thing in the sport. Like it's like it's AK of running. Like if you can, it turns it into a, a different sport if it's four K. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's just that it, it, it would potentially be like like I say a good introduction. I mean, when I initially heard about high rocks, I was you know being a pussy and put off by the 8k running <laughs> but i'd have signed up for 4k like no hesitation you know um, yeah no i get that like I, I i think there's merits of both i just think if you want to stick to your your roots of what the sport is you can still half the workload by saying you haven't got to do half you're going to do four stations you can pick the stations you like like you know it's i don't know that's a and you can you can do it like the mix you can break it so you know you can you can go and do the escape I can do the side push. You can do the side pull. Like is it like we can still swap and change? I think it's a good idea. I don't know the, like any further logistics on that, but I'm a cute guy. No, take note of that one. Why not? Yeah, I mean, again, it's probably a, a tough one to judge if you did it like that because it's like oh, well, well, they're doing not... it for the mixed relay. You make a good point. That's a they're doing it anyway for there. Like I, I don't know where you'd fit it in the time zone and what weight you would use. I think you'd have to standardize it and be like we're just using the men's open weight. Yeah. 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 Like that's that's it. Like not maybe maybe not men's pro, but we're gonna use the men's open weight. So you know you're gonna to have to use uh six kg warm Yeah. Like you know, I, I you they, that's fine a detail, but I think as a premise, what what you're suggesting there's actually quite a quite a nice idea. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's put that let's that one done. Uh so I think those three that we've covered are probably like what I felt were the main issues that people had, like with the most validity, but there was a ton more. So we, we'll get into some of those. Um, so the next one was uh, having more racing. So at the World Championships, the elite race, that was like a true race. But at most high ups events, you don't really know where you are in the scheme of things, who you're racing against. You know, if you're trying to podium in your age group, you've got no idea where you are or how you're doing yeah. until until all the all the times are in. So uh thinking about if there's some way in which they could bring more racing in into the sport. And I do think that would be nice. Like I've done I've done events, I've done a national fitness games in the past where they I was in my age group, but there was only like other four other people from my age group in it. And I was doing like really well against those guys. And then at the end of the day when the, the the times were brought in against all the other guys in the age group from from different waves um i didn't do so well you know <laughs> and i think if i if i'd had those all of them to race against i think it would have made uh, yeah a, a i got difference. manchester open and uh, took second but i won my wave and the guy who came third was the guy who came second behind me kind of idea in the in the wave and it was a guy who was in it that we just didn't know we just didn't know he was there and like yeah. we were battling me and Omar, we were having a great little race. And it was great to have someone there to be like back and forth, back and forth. And we yeah. finished, and I assumed I'd won the race. I was like, that's it, we've had a great race there. But this other guy beat us by like 20, 30 seconds or something like that. And I was like, I don't know, and you were there. Like, I, who knows? Because he would have known I was there. So, you know, we, yeah. we probably would have gone quicker yeah, yeah. himself. Like, yeah. like, I'm not saying I'd have won. I'm just saying it's like, it would have been nice to have the race. It would have been nice to like, both of us probably gone even quicker because we'd have been like, all right, yeah. like uh, there's not much in this. If there's only 20, 30 seconds, it's like, can you find that? Yeah. Don't put that wall ball down one last time. Like yeah, yeah. that makes it, it makes it nice, right? It's, it's kind of what we're like. I know it's a time trial to an extent, but it's still a race. And like, yeah. especially if you are a bit more competitive and you want to, 
but you want to probably avoid the guy, but it's nice to know who you're competing against. So yeah. Um, it's a, it's a tough one to resolve again, right? I keep saying this, but uh, it is a tough one. The only the only sort of thing that I thought of is well, making sure that they do start the waves in in age groups, and and I think they do try and do it by a fin- estimated finishing time. Yeah, so if I'm you say you, pretty sure they do, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, start starting in the same age group, and then and then maybe even having a wristband that sort of like indicates the color of your uh, uh, like by color. Is yeah. your age group, you know, so that you can at least say, oh, you know, I've got to, got to go and catch that guy. He's got a yellow wristband on, you know. Yeah. Um, might might Some make logistics it there, but I, I like the idea. Uh, what they've done on Worlds is fantastic. I think if we, if we could get a little bit more of that, then great. Um, it's it's always a shame to finish a race and realize that um, you're not as competitive as you thought you were because the guy behind another wave. Had beat you, and you know, there's that is what it is. You know what I mean, but like, I, it's, I do think the premise is we work off a, a, a race for a time, so I like the idea of anyone. I'm not, I'm not overly upset over this, but it would just be like, and I think it was nice that in the world they managed to bring that together because partially because it's a small race, there's a lot less numbers, a lot easier to do it, and go, you're all age, you're all age, this and this, get in the pen, you're going, you're going yeah. together. Yeah. Like yeah. if there's you know if there's 400 athletes or something like that of age group 20 to 25 and you're not all going together like it's you're gonna have to do multiple waves and it's hard to know who's you know who's where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so the next one again, probably not not the most important point, but um, by all accounts they adjust the track size for bigger and smaller rock zones. So the distance you travel has got to be 8.7 kilometers, yes. apparently. Uh, so I think it would be nice to know what the length of the track is prior to the event. So that if you are running certain, or, or aiming to run certain, say you're trying to run four and a half minute kilometers. Um, if that track is only 925 meters, then you, you don't want to be trying to time it at four and a half four and a half minutes for, for that 925. Yeah, you're going too slow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I think, it, I think it would be worth knowing, just in the technical briefing saying, well, it's a big rock zone today, so the, the track is 950 metres. Um, I mean, maybe that's just me because I just geek out on the, on the times. I mean, and, I'll be honest, it's not a me thing. Man. I, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't care less. Like, I'm going to work hard. i got to be, you know, i got to push my limit on the road. I'm not worried about it. Like that does that doesn't bother me, but I get it will for a few people. So it's is it worth having? I mean, if it's an easy fix, why not? Just an easy suggestion. If it's a low hanging fruit and you can go, we know the size of the track because we do calculate it all to make sure it's okay. Run. Then just tell us. But like if it's that easy, then it's I mean, I don't want to create more work for people if it's like if it's gonna be like, oh no, we're gonna have to go around with a, a measuring tape and you know, or a wheel or work out what exactly it is. I mean, that wouldn't be that hard either. But if it's simple enough, just just put it in the pack. There'll be there will be some people who like it. The one the one thing that it does stop, and maybe they don't even care about this, but it, it stops people even talking about oh, it's a big rock zone today, and or it was a small rock zone today, and it's like yeah. well, yeah, but it don't matter because they made the track smaller, you know. So um, it stops all that conversation, and maybe they like that conversation because it's just people talking about high rocks, but. Um, yeah. You know, no news is bad news kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, not the world's most important one, but something for him to think about. Uh, next one, and you're probably not the man to ask about this, but with using pro weights at the World Championships, does that make sense beyond a certain age group? Um, I am the one to ask about this. I think- you're, far, you're far too young to talk about this. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm exactly the I think no matter what, you're at the World Championships. Like, you use the pro weight. Like, it's the World Champs. Like, it's just like, it's the... It's the, right. it's the, it's the it's a sense of occasion. Like, yeah. we're all in the same boat. Like, no matter what age group you're in, like, if you're in the 60 plus age group, you're both having to push this weight. Like, it's not like I'm 
60 and I get to use the open, but you get to use the pro. Like we're both gonna struggle, right? Like I get it. Like whatever the whatever the, the issue is, either end of the spectrum, I'm only 18 and I can't push up with 75 kilograms. Like it's a world champs, mate. Like this is this is what we're doing. Like this is how it's you don't have to cope. Like is this meant to be the best of the best? You don't see the Olympics altering things for you know, oh, we're not too sure. like, just like that they're the this is well, do they, no, do, do no they, I, I was going to ask you about this. I, I don't know, to be fair, but what, what are they doing in, in in the CrossFit Games? Do they do they adjust anything for for the Masters athletes or anything like that? Do you know? I don't know. Is that his answer? I don't know. Um, the, the, the only thing I was going to say, the, the, I, I found this quite interesting. So, so this came up, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a look at um, over fifties, right? If you look at in London at London in, in April 22, London had 67 competitors that were age 50 or over, but 65 of those competed at the open weights. So only two went pro. And I thought that was interesting. So there's, there's clearly not much appetite for 50 and above. And 50, it was an arbitrary age group that I picked. Um, but only two people above 50 in the men, in men's I should say um went pro so there's you know there's obviously not a huge demand to go pro so it just it got me wondering well maybe there is yeah, but, I, I, but I agree with you it's the world chance and I must admit I did ask um uh, Peter Kelly who competes 60 65 I know I think, he's a legend yeah, yeah. he's also awesome yeah 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 he's great and uh I, I think he replied like he had a few pros and cons, but he said on balance, I think they should be at the pro weights. There's so, no, there's no doubt that to me that Peter will get that pro weight shifted. And yeah. he's, he's like, and also like, I just think I, it's optional, right? Like, it's, there's no, no one's forcing anyone to be here. Like, it's it, you can compete at fifty plus and compete in open and, and be super competitive and just race open. You just the world champs is the world champs. Like, you don't have to go to the worlds, like. Mm-hmm. Just don't, if you don't, I'm not comfortable with that weight. 50 is not old. Like, you can move weight at 50. Like, I'm not having that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to be accused of saying everyone over 50 is old. It was just, yeah, it's it just was... like, it's not, you, you can still, you, no, not having it. Like, it's just like that thing where you can be like, all right, like, I, I understand if you don't want to, but that's a, a choice. Like, then that's, yeah, yeah. Like, and the worlds are like, this is, it's prestigious. It's, it's it's the world champs. Where this is this is what we do. We make sure everyone's on the same. Like it's we it's a battle battle in and out. It's, it's not a. It's for me. It's that's what it is. And you know you can train for that. And there's there's no reason you can't up your weight. But there's also no reason you can't uh, decide that you just love racing open weight. It's quicker. and You feel safer. Like there's a there's a different vibe to it. Like it's a better time. Um, like whatever it may be. Like and choose to race that and be as competitive as you want, as, as you can be in that category. I, I think they're almost two different weights, two different um, races. And I don't think it's any easier to do open. I think open is a faster race. You've got to be able to be, you've got to be able to move because it's, because, and so like, therefore like the lactic buildup is like, it's, it's, so, it's powerful, it's, it's hard, it's, the bear is real. Like, it's, like, it's like doing a million reps with a two kilogram dumbbell for bicep curls. Like, all right, that's got to hurt. Like, it's, it's, there's a build up. So it's a, it's a very different race. It's, you know, it's comparing a 5K to a 10K. It's yeah. different. So let's just, let's not take it away from anyone who wants to race, race open. They're, they're working, they're still working RPG 10. They're still going for it all the way. That hurts. Like, who cares? Who cares what the weight is? Like, it's still a race. And to be honest, it's probably more competitive because there's more people in it. So, yeah. Yeah. like, I, I've got, I've got no, I got no preference. I just think you're, if if I'm a runner, runner, I'm probably going to be more competitive in open. And I'm going to go for that. That's going to be where I put my focus because I want to win. Simple. Yeah. Cool. All right. Next one. Why the lanes? So this is a, uh, this is the interesting point, but not just the running lanes. But the wider lanes on the lunges and the burpees, especially where you can get stuck behind people sometimes, can't you? A little bit. I've been um, stuck a few times on the um, on the burpees, partially because yeah. people burpee all over the place. <laughs> Still, <laughs> yeah, I've got I found a good video on this. I'm just going to share my screen quickly. 
hopefully this works. It's not me, is it? Not me. <laughs> no, 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 it's not you. But funny enough, it's a guy we... Uh, Step me up. Remember, remember when I first met you um, in, on the way to Birmingham? Uh, yeah. And, and we got on the bus with, with this guy. So th this guy in the yellow shorts, watch him here. Um, Where's he so going? This is, a, this is a Mark Lewis video. Yeah. But you can, if you watch him, like he's, he's stuck behind these guys. As yeah. you can see, he just wants to get around them. Uh, I mean, oh, he, he oh, there's a there's a step. He just took a step. Oh. Yeah, oh well, yeah. Let's not let's what not judge his fools. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, uh, but I don't think that's fair to him. He was actually he he, he probably ended up doing an extra baby there because he was stuck behind. Him. I exactly, mean, yeah. I think, yeah, it takes confidence to be able to turn around and scream at someone to be like, move. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just thought that was a good example of this. Like, a really good example. Yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I, you can't argue with it, can you? If you can have wider lanes, let's do it. Like, especially on those babies. I think I never really had a problem on the lunges. Like, it's people aren't as uh, wavy. No. <laughs> no. uh, I've been stuck behind until the end and got, got around them at the end and said, I'm going to front of you, cracked on. Uh, but not to that extent, just to the extent of seeing someone ahead of me, knowing I'm going to catch them and being like, mate, I'm going to get you at the end, get out of the way, kind of right. idea. But it's uh, that's not fair. Uh, that, that, that guy's probably done an extra baby there and you know, lost a bit of momentum. And, um, so if, if you can get that, great, but that's hard. I, th right? I feel like I feel like there's probably there's probably normally room to get that a little bit of extra width in there. I think he's been unlucky there. To be fair, like to have three people moving at the same time in a oh, row, yeah. like I've I've never I've never seen that. Like um, from from my side, uh, I assume that's open as well. So open is busier. Yeah, I, it, it does get busy. I, I wouldn't say I've ever been truly stuck behind people before, but like. I was aware of it when it came up as feedback and I didn't have to search for long to find that video at all. I was just like, oh, I'm sure there's a video of people doing burpees Is Mark called that out as Aussie or is that what? No, 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 no. That was just uh, Mark like showing his, his own bit. burpees and I, I saw yeah. it in the background. I thought, oh, that's like literally a perfect example. Uh, yeah. I didn't have to look hard for it. So I, I suspect it's happening an awful lot. And like I say, I, I don't think it's hard for, I suspect it's not hard for higher ops to resolve that and make it a little bit wider. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe it is, you know. Um, but you just have to go a bit quicker, guys. Get out the way. Yeah, and you know, if if that means like making the farmers' carries a little bit thinner, because I'm, you, 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 you generally don't get stuck behind someone on a farmers' carry, for example. And if that frees up some room for the burpees, I think I think it's probably worthwhile. You know. Yeah, I'm full on. Uh, next one. Have you got Have you got time to carry on, James? T tell me when you're finished. I give, you, um, I give you a couple more minutes. I'll have to wrap up in a sec. All right, mate. All right. I've got to go train. Uh, I've got to practice my burpees. What's that? I said I've got to go practice my burpees. <laughs> uh, next one that come up, and to be fair, only one person said this, but the price of entry to the events. Um, I'm going to be really honest. I don't know what it costs. Well, I, I didn't either, so I looked at this before the call. <laughs> about 80 quid? Well... I, I think it varies. You know, they have uh, the, the price goes up, then it as it gets closer to the event. I looked at, so Manchester, which is what's that? Six months away, is ninety nine quid now for an individual. Which is, I was quite surprised. There's quite a lot. Uh, eighty nine fifty per person for the doubles, a sixty five pound a person for the relay. And I, I think, like, if you book for Glasgow now, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but that, you know what? Like, it's, getting, it's getting a fair amount, right? It's. I mean, it's so easy for me to say, sitting here, uh, but I base it on I, what I only think I can work off is triathlon again. Like, I bring it up a lot. Um, sorry, guys. Um, is, it would cost about the same to enter a local triathlon because a hell of a lot more to went to a big a big main brand one uh, but like it would end up cost you similar you know maybe like 60 pound and this is you know eight years ago kind of thing i'm talking about like five years ago max um so inflation all the rest of it we are, we are it, it's it's not far off plus the fact these i'm not talking about races where they've closed roads off and rented space this is like 
there's a lake there, jump in the lake, we'll do the swim, get on your bikes. Um, it's well organized, well marshaled, all the rest of it. It's a real race. But like, I'm not talking closed race events. Like, these guys are renting the XL. You know, they're rent, rent, renting Manchester Central Station, a Birmingham NEC. Like, if I'm paying 60 for a for an open outside space triathlon, kind of feels about right five years later to be paying 100 for a rented space. That takes a lot of logistics, a lot of a lot of equipment. So you know, they're all assets that they're they they've had to buy all that kit. I don't think it's probably that unreasonable. Like. To, for a sport, I think you can only compare it to other sports. Right? I think you can't be like just a lot of money because all right, hundred pound is a lot of money, but is it is that a lot of money in this in the space of what other sports cost you? What else can you play? Like for what else would you rather do for a hundred pound? Like sports wise, I'm not I'm talking about the lappies. I'm not. No, we're not talking about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do you want do you want the list? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come back to me with those comments, guys. I'm not talking about <laughs> um, Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I think I don't think it's a uh, it's difficult for me to say. I don't I don't I don't I don't think it's unreasonable, if I'm honest. Um All right. and it, it's probably a good time to say use one of our discount codes as well, right? Rocks Life 10 or uh JFit 10. Exactly, JFit 10, 10% off. So there you go. You go it's a bargain. <laughs> message them back and tell them to put a price up no I'm not don't worry <laughs> alright so uh, uh, I, I think that's the main ones out of the way let me uh, let me quickly read out a couple of the others that came up and then uh, and then and then we'll finish up so uh, Red Bull having Red Bull uh, in the rock zone Red Bull and Walter I think there's probably better options than Red Bull that, that we could have, although I'm sure they pay a nice amount of money for, for the sponsorship. Um, it's a sponsorship thing, that's not a... It's, it's, they're not going to change that. It's who, 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 who helps pay for the XL Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you, yeah. Can have, you can have someone else, and you tick the prices, you go up, you go up. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, what else was there? Um, uh, making sure there's no outside assistance, so uh, people passing you drinks or something like that. That would be automatic disqualification in some other events. So um, trying to hit down a bit harder on that. Uh, you know, I think if, if we go back to judging standards and, and put that in the category uh, of judging, honest, I think, I, there's bigger priorities, right? But it's, it's, it's bigger priorities. And also, is that a rule? Uh, apparently so, yeah. yeah. So that's, I've heard... that's the point, isn't it? Apparently so. Like in the World Championships, the High Rocks 15 elite, they were getting water past them from spectators. Were they? So, like, it's, I don't think it's a rule, you know, is the honest answer. I think it's a, almost like a nice to have. I don't think it's an official, I don't think it's in the handbook. Someone might turn around and prove me wrong on this, but I, I and I, I, when we're talking water, uh, like, I'm not talking about outside assistance in like any other form. I don't know what you could be thinking there, but like, if you're talking about someone passing you a bottle of water when you're on the run round, like, I, I don't see the harm in it. I mean, it could become chaotic if there's if there's everyone doing it, but everyone's not doing it. So, like, I don't know. Like, if if, if it's all, all I can say, if it's okay for a hunter to be passed a bottle of water, I want to be able to get a bottle of water too. <laughs> uh, I'm not else? hunter. Before someone says it, I know I'm not. <laughs> um, uh, random drug testing. Although I mean, this it certainly isn't a priority for ninety nine percent of the athletes at, at High Rocks. But <laughs> if you want, <laughs> I mean, um, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe it's like random. Anyone who's on the podium has to, you know, might be asked for a, a blood test. I mean, I'm up for it, but I think it's also like I think it could put some people off, not because they're cheating, but if you get to if you're in the open category and you you, you win, and then next minute they're going. You got to give some blood. I don't know. Or is it your? I don't know. A urine test? I don't, I don't know. Like, is it seems awful? I don't know. I, 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 I guess just maybe as as the sport grows and the elite race grows and the prize money grows, then then maybe yeah, there's, yeah, there's a yeah. case for testing the elites, right? Um, yeah. There's. I think once they get to that point, there's okay, fine. Yeah. But I, you're talking about general. <laughs> like, all right. Joe Bloggs wins the open category. Uh, uh, you know, age, age group sixty plus. 
I don't think it's very fair to ask him to go give a lot of blood to, to no. check if he's check if he's not taking any uh, extra extra gear. But I mean, maybe it is. I mean, I I, I can't imagine most people would actually care on the basis that most people are here for fun and want a clean sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, more PFT events in the north of England came up. Uh... Not by me, by the way. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for more stuff in the in the north of England, but uh, that one wasn't me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think everything more in the north would be nice because I'm here, so I'm unbiased. I, I don't give a man piece, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Folks, in, folks in my way. <laughs> um, uh, and then the last, well, last two, I'll finish on these two. Relay winners should all get a flag. At the moment, only one one flag per team. That seems fair enough and probably cheap to resolve. Um, if, if I won a yeah, relay, you probably... shouldn't be stretched at two, right? Come on. Well, yeah, yeah. And then the last suggestion: they should make the make the flag a useful beach towel instead. I mean, awesome, but like <laughs> expensive. Gives you a bit of bragging rights on the beach. <laughs> uh, Johnny really nice. Joe and me say that like, typical joke in England where all the Germans get to the beach lounges first <laughs> just come on and Hyrax lounges uh, Island beach towels that'd be, that'd be brilliant to see you're like that's what the Germans got us again must be them Hyrax <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I mean maybe I, I mean I don't I wouldn't say no to a towel all I can say I'm not supposed I feel like it'd be a bit weird standing up at the end of the race with a towel on like they quite like some of them, like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's um, that was most of the feedback. There, there were other bits we, we haven't got time to get to, but um, that was most of it. So thank you if you did uh, send anything in. Feel free to add in the comments your thoughts on what we've talked about, and if there's anything else that 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 you think could be improved upon. Um, thanks for joining, James. No worries. Thanks Where for should me. people find you? Oh, definitely on YouTube. So if you're on your YouTube, you can probably find my YouTube. Uh, it's JFit. It's you know JFit, High Rocks. It's all it's all like, it's all about High Rocks. To be honest, we talking about earlier standards. I, I've got a couple of videos around standards myself that are trying to explain or helpful hints on like the sled pull push. Like there's more coming up. I've got them in the pipeline, but like things like wall balls, best standards, best practice. So like there's things there that you know, people might find helpful for introduction to to High Rocks, beginner's guide to High Rocks, kind of, that kind of general stuff. So. I've got a few bits there. I was on a podcast with uh, one of my, my other co-hosts, Joe. Uh, we do the hybrid approach. Uh, hybrid approach, I can't say it quickly. Uh, we get to speak to some awesome athletes. So that's another one if you want to check that out on your Spotify, Apples, all that good stuff. Um, and then just my Instagram, jfit, Uh Just watching me, you know, beast myself on a on a, on a ski egg or a sled push generally. But generally put some stuff up there that might be helpful for you to implement in your high rocks working out stuff. Oh, perfect all right well thanks mate appreciate it see you later everyone bye <laughs>